Hello, everyone. Ladis Hasmaris from the wanderinginvestor.com. So today we'll be discussing how to remotely open a bank account in the country of Georgia. And we'll be having a chat with Sergio, who's originally from Germany and who has a team in Georgia that helps with this very process. Sergio, how are you? I'm fine. Thank you so much. And you? Great, great. So you are one of the few, very few remaining service providers in Georgia that can help people open a bank account remotely. So mm -hmm. can you talk us through Georgian banking, why Georgian banking, and how you can help people? Yeah, sure. Um, basically, I'm, yeah, I visited Georgia, I think, in 2017, the first time. And since then, I set uh, some flex there in this country, um, built up a team, and uh, have strong connections to banks and uh, other service providers in the country. So that's why we still able to open um, yeah, remotely accounts for clients. Basically, we are doing it at the moment for um, German clients from Switzerland and Austria. But um, for you as a, as a watcher or as a viewer, it's interesting when you're coming out of one of the OECD countries. Um, then it's interesting for you, excluded the U.S. So we are not working with U.S. persons or green card holders. So if you're living in the U.S., um, it will be not working out. We cannot offer this service. But if you are um, in one of the other OECD countries, um, yeah, we can do it and can help you with that. So generally, any EU country, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Israel, uh, Chile, a few of them. Yeah. Um, let's start. I mean, uh, Georgia, um, the country of Georgia, not the state in the U.S., um, is uh, maybe not um, known for for everybody. So it's like um, I refer to it as a hidden secret um, because you can do a lot of things there. And um, banking is one option, what been, uh, one very interesting option, what is very simple still to open an account with a personal account. I have to mention that if you want to open a corporate account, it will be not working out. So uh, it's only working out for personal bank accounts um, and for corporations what are registered in Georgia and they need substance in Georgia. So if you have, let's say, a US company or a Canadian company, something like that, it will be not work out. We cannot open a corporate account. This is just uh, important to clarify that. So what is Georgia interesting for? Just to have a general view to this country, if you haven't been there yet, um, it has an interesting tax system for private individuals, as well as for entrepreneurs and corporations. It has a territorial taxation. So basically, um, foreign income is tax exempt. But they have like um, very specific rules, what is foreign income, what not. So if you're living in Georgia and working there with your laptop, it's not foreign income, so it will be taxed. But they have like um, flat rate taxation of 20% and um, the personal taxation, income tax and uh, corporate tax is a deferred tax system. So it means only distributed co company profits getting taxed with 15% flat and withholding tax of 5%. So it's a low tax jurisdiction. And um, it can be quite interesting if you want to move your residency or tax residency to this country. It can be a good base. So because you have a good quality of life there, if you want to live there, sometimes as a digital nomad or perpetual traveler. The company formation in the country is very easy and straightforward. Uh, it's um, done in one to three days, depending if you will pay for Express or not. So this is very um, easy to set up an LLC. But it's not comparable to an LLC like with a US LLC. Also, if you need to create substance in the country for your company, so for example, you want to hire employees and want to have an, a real office and a company director and all these things, it's quite cheap in Georgia because this country is not very expensive. Also, the employees, you can find good and um, relatively cheap um, employees compared worldwide if you compare it with other jurisdictions. Yeah, and then it's quite uh, still uh, easy to open um, multi-currency um, accounts, bank accounts. But as I said to you, only personal bank accounts, not corporate bank accounts. And it's still possible to do that remotely. Now we will see how long it will be possible. At the moment, it's still available. And then I would just want to give you a few things because I really love Georgia. I have been there a few times and they have good food. They have very good wine. Wine is coming um, from uh, Georgia um, uh, originally. They have their own culture. It's quite safe there. And the uh, old town of Belisi is very beautiful. Um, Belisi is a vibrant city. It's, it's nice there. I really like it. And the tourism is in general very important for Georgia. That's why they are welcoming to people. And you can have their really a cosmopolitan lifestyle. And most countries of the world get a one year visa on arrival. So that means you can just stay there for one year, could leave the country, come back. But you have to check with your passport, with your citizenship, if you will get a one year visa on arrival or not. And it's quite close to Europe, so 
you can easily f uh, go to Europe if you want to spend some time also on um, in European countries. It has good flight connections and yeah, that's a few points in general about Georgia. Um, let's have a look now for the banking in Georgia. What makes banking in Georgia so exciting? The main point is here that you can just open an account very simple with only with your um, passport. And at the moment, you don't need a proof of residence. Most um, banks, they uh, require you to um, that you show them a proof of residence. In Georgia, at the moment, it's not um, needed. You can just open the account only with a passport. So that's that's quite interesting, I think, because there are not a lot of options around the world where you can do it like that. At the moment, they are also not part of a CRS, of a Common Reporting Standard. They plan to join it in 2024. Um, so that's also a good thing because you get a little bit more privacy. Also, if, if, I, you... if I can jump in here, I have a lot of people who contact me. They're like, oh, I'd like to open a bank account in Georgia uh, because not CRS. You know, and they're hoping to hide their money. The reality oh, is good. Georgia is going to join the CRS in 2024. So if you're hoping to hide your money, you're going to hide it for a year. And then suddenly all the information is going to be shared with your home government. And then you're going to get busted. Problems. So do yourself a favor and, you know, don't try to, for people out there, don't even try to play this game because you'll just end up having more problems. If you want to pay less taxes, just move, change countries, go to Georgia. Exactly. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's that's a point. I mean, uh, bank accounts are not uh, working anymore that you can just hide money, make tax evasion or money laundering. It's not working out. So just be transparent and report your bank accounts um, in your um, home country where you are a tax resident. It's very important. And it, it will be not uh, working out anymore. Everything getting more and more transparent. So um, at one day, they will find out about it. So it's it's not worth um, the stress <laughs> to do it. But anyway, it's at the moment, they are not part of the CRS. So it's like a little bit more privacy at the moment, but anyway, you have to always fulfill your duties and your um, yeah report everything. If you want to open term deposits, you will still get um, quite good interest rates um, in Georgia, and um, the account management fees are also quite low. The yearly fees. Um, if you open an account, you have quite good um, card portfolio. So, for example, if you go with a priority banking, you usually get a Visa and Mastercard Platinum. Um, if you go to private banking, you get even an infinite, <clears throat> so the highest a Visa card, for example. Um, but most people, they just go for priority banking and then they get like the uh, platinum cards. And they are still good because you have um, high limits. And um, yeah, it's, they are very good cards. Here you can see the um, how much demand deposits are in the bank. So it's around about uh, 13 billion euro. And the GDP of Georgia is uh, 15.5 billion um, euro. So you can see the banking sector is nearly the same as big as the, uh, as the GDP. And, um, the bigger the banking sector is, um, the harder it would be for, for government to rescue it. You know, if, for example, if a banking sector is 10 times big than the GDP, it will be much more harder for the country to rescue, um, this banking sector if there's a major crisis. And, um, if it's, uh, under, um, yeah, under one, this, uh, ratio, it's, um, quite good usually because, um, maybe it's more easy for the government to rescue the banking sector if something happens. Here on the right side, you can see non-performing loan rates of Georgian banks. So you can see in 2021, there was, they were quite high with 8.45%, um, because of COVID. I think, um, there were a lot of people where it was not able to meet their, um, uh, payments. And now in 2021, it's already dropped the rate to 5%. And in German banks, for example, the um, MPL ratio is around 2.5% that you can compare it. The largest banks in Georgia are the TBC Bank and the Bank of Georgia, as you can see, these two, and the other ones are quite small. That's why we uh, mainly focus on the TBC Bank and the Bank of Georgia. But at the moment, when we're recording this video, the TBC Bank is um, the interesting one to open an account with um, because it's the easiest one at the moment. Also, it's a third um, country. Um, when you now, for example, if you are an EU national and you live in, inside the EU, Georgia would be a country that is outside the EU. So, and anyway, they are working with the West. So it's good to have an account um, outside of your home country so that you are a little bit diversified. Um, at the moment, when you open an account, they don't request any tax number from you or address. The country itself is quite liberal and they have um, good legal security because they have the Economic Liberty Act. And the Economic Liberty Act prevents the governments to introduce new tax and um, or uh, increasing 
um, existing ones. So if they want to lower tax, they can do that, um, the government. But if they want to um, increase the tax rates, they are not um, allowed to do it. They have to make a referendum. So the Georgians have to vote for it. That's quite interesting. But for a bank account, it's not that important. But if you want to move there, for example, it's um, interesting as an entrepreneur to know that. Um, your account comes with an IBAN number. So this just makes it more easy to make transfers. But the uh, Georgia is not part of the SEPA area. So that means if you want to send euro to a, to a multi-currency account, um, you have to go over an inter intermediary bank in Europe. But the bank will inform you how to do that. So it's uh, quite easy and it's uh, not really complicated. Um, if you want to deposit money, you can do it in cash. So you can, let's say, fly to Georgia and deposit cash to your account. But you can also do it by bank transfers. Uh, Georgian banks are quite crypto friendly, but that doesn't mean that you can cash out all your Bitcoins right uh, over a big exchange like Kraken or something like that and then send everything directly to Georgian banks because then they may be also um, start asking. So it's always better to talk to your personal banker, um, inform them before that you want to um, cash out some crypto and the amount and then just let's, uh, let them answer you if it's okay in which documents they maybe want to see from you before before you do it because you don't want to get your account frozen and then have a problem and then deal with, with the bank in the end, right? So at the moment, it's still easy. You don't need uh, a lot of know your customer documents. Um, and it's good to go uh, if you go now and secure this option instead of waiting uh, longer because maybe it will be in a few months not available anymore, this option. And I'll just, just a few points. So if you go to Georgia with a bunch of cash, please be very aware of the limits that you're allowed to take with you without declaring when you leave your country. Mm -hmm. It depends on each country, but don't, don't just, you know, take 20,000 euros or dollars and then just go through borders thinking it's all fine because typically it's at least, you know, a maximum of $10,000 you can take. Again, it depends on the jurisdiction. So make sure that you follow the, the customs regulations or else customs can and will seize all of your money. Um, so be careful with that. Yeah, crypto friendly to Sergio's point. Georgia is a little bit erratic. I've cashed out some crypto using Georgian banks before. Sometimes it went really well. Other times I, I got almost yelled at. <laughs> mm -hmm. It was fine in the end, but like compliance wasn't happy. So you need to, yes, yeah, speak to your banker and take things slowly. You know, you don't just open a bank account in, in Georgia and then send like cash out a hundred thousand. Like that's, okay. that's just not going to work. And then in terms of KYC, the KYC is minimal, but the AML, so the anti-money laundering is, is quite heavy. So, you know, when you open an account and you start transferring money, they will ask you for where did the money come from? They'll ask you for bank statements from where the, the money came from, if it came from one of your other uh, personal accounts, if the money came from someone else, what was it for? Where are the justifications, et cetera? So people should not interpret a low KYC as low AML. Um, in terms of AML, they've become they've become a lot, lot stricter. So it's very practical banking. It's got great online banking. But people shouldn't interpret this as you can do whatever you want because they'll be quick to shut your account if they feel that you're doing anything that's not okay. And then on the first point that what makes Georgia so exciting, but it's also, you know, a, a drawback, it's its geography. It is a pro-Western country that is south of Russia and that had a war with Russia in the recent past. So in a world of heightened geopolitical tensions between East and West, there is an element of geopolitical risk with having assets in Georgia. So personally, yes, I do have assets in Georgia, but I'm making sure to not be too exposed and I'm monitoring the, the situation. So it would appear that they've learned their lesson from the past and that getting involved in, in a bad way with Russia is absolutely not beneficial. So it's calmed them down. But how long will, will this state of mind remain in the country? I don't know. So there is there is that risk that must absolutely be highlighted. Yes, I will do that also on the next page. I will we'll talk about that. But all the points you, you was mentioning here, they are 
um, in general, um, it's, you can say there are, there are general rules to deal with uh, banks, you know. Um, you should never, let's say, if you open a new account, directly transfer uh, hundreds of thousands of uh, dollars or euros or something like that because they will ask. So it's always better to communicate with the bank, always talk with them before, always let them know what are your plans. And then they will let you know if it's okay for them or not, right, and um, what they need from you. Because in the end, you make yourself a lot of stress if you don't take care of all these um things right and as uh, Ladis was, uh, t uh, was um, mentioning um, the AML is quite strict already in Georgia so they will definitely ask you for some documents where your funds are coming from um, most clients they don't have big problems with that but they will ask for it so it's not like let's say in um, jurisdiction where you can just send your money nobody will ask any questions so just be prepared to um, have some documents to um, let, yeah, let them know where your funds are coming from um, yeah, I just want to talk about um, Georgia as jurisdictions and some um, important figures, uh, what are interesting for you. Um, the Central Bank, uh, the National Bank of Georgia, has an equity ratio of solvency of 16.36%. Uh, um, uh, this uh, figure is from June 2022. I was calculating it. So and I say usually um, a good jurisdiction and a good central bank should have a solvency ratio of minimum 10% or higher. So with 16%, it's quite okay. But um, I mean, could be always higher with a figure, right? Because the more solvent the central bank, the better it is. And um, the easier um, this um, bank can rescue also other um, local banks if there are some problems with, uh, with those uh, banks. Do they have a deposit insurance? Yes, they have, but it's not really, let's say, high amounts. Uh, it's 15,000 Georgian Lari per account per bank, um, what are insured. But the insurance is not really um, yeah, a big one here. And it's anyway not um, quite interesting to only look for deposit insurance um, because most of the time they don't have enough capital inside this um, insurance um, to, um, if there's a major banking crisis, to um, yeah, bail out everybody, right? Um, then the government of a state, they have a debt to GDP ratio of 57%. I made that here in orange because it's already quite high. So the lower it is, the better, right? So um, they have already a lot of debt in, in Georgia. And um, other things, um, they have uh, good ties to the West. And um, as Ladis uh, mentioned already, this whole region is a powder keg. So let's say um, in the north is Russia, right? In the south is Turkey. Then there's Azerbaijan and Armenia. They always constantly fight. So this whole region has um, some uh, tensions and problems. So you should um, keep that in mind. And not, not put all your money into Georgia, right? So that's um, quite important, I would say. Yeah. But un unlike and, Germans, yeah. they'll they'll have gas this winter. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> so and then eighty four percent of the GDP are already demand deposits in the bank. So as I mentioned before, um, the higher this number, um, the harder it will get for the government to rescue the banking sector if there would be a major banking crisis. Now I just want to let you know which kind of banking are, are there in Georgia. It's a uh, retail banking and retail banking. I would not really recommend to do it because it's, it's the cheapest option. But, um, usually the workers, um, at the bank, they are not quite competent and you will have a lot of problem, especially with the communication. Um, some of them, they don't speak uh, quite well English. So that's a problem with retail banking. So uh, most clients, and especially if you want to open remotely an account, we always go with um, this second option, priority banking. It's the, uh, the last step before private banking, you can say. And uh, with, their, uh, with this option, you have better trained staff. They speak English usually. But here and there are still some problems. So there can be some communication problems. Um, but I um, had in the past not really big problems um, with um, Georgian banking. So the online banking is everything in English. And you can communicate with a personal banker via WhatsApp, for example, and uh, they speak English. So usually they are not big problems, but there can be here and there some small problems still. And the good thing is because you can co um, communicate via WhatsApp or email with your personal banker, you can make remote banking. So it means you can cancel transfers, you can send transfers, everything via remote banking. You will write them, you have to confirm it via email. So, yeah, that's an option. So you don't have to be in Georgia to make a transfer, for example. That's quite um, good. And then um, the last option you would have um, is private banking. Here on the right side, you will see the um, Bank of Georgia Wealth. It's the um, private banking department of the Bank of Georgia. 
and they have um, yeah very trained staff. Usually they all speak English. Um, it's a very special focus on the customer here, and they have uh, the highest quality card options available. Mm, but for example, if you want to get a bank account with a um, Bank of Georgia Wealth, you have to minimum deposit three million Georgian lari, or um, um, in, in another country uh, currency, and it's around about one million euro. So for most people, they don't see it to um, do it. In priority banking, they don't have a minimum deposit. So let's compare with TBC Bank, the TBC concept. This is the priority banking option of a solo bank. The solo bank <clears throat> is, um, yeah, from the Bank of Georgia. It's the, their priority banking option. And um, I just marked or highlighted the TBC bank in green because at the moment, this is the most convenient option um, you can choose. Um, there you will get uh, priority banking with your own personal banker. Um, you have one account option, so you don't, you don't have to um, choose between um, different account options. Um, the account maintenance uh, fees per year are 250 Georgian Lari at the moment. You will get one Visa card Platinum and one MasterCard Platinum with this account. Uh, you don't have any minimum deposit, but sure, you should deposit some money if you open an account, right? And there is also no big compliance check before opening. Um, there's uh, no connection to Georgia needed or required. So you don't have to, let's say, rent an apartment in Georgia or something like that, right? So this is not needed. You can, uh, you don't have to live in Georgia. You don't need any ties or connections to this country. And the um, opening process is quite simple compared to the solo bank. And let's have a look now for the solo bank. There you also have your um, priority banking with personal banker. You have two account options you can choose from. And one of these costs 300 Georgian Lari per year and the other one 700 Georgian Lari. With a solo um, account, you will get two Visa cards. Can you say in yeah. dollars roughly? Roughly. Oh, I, I don't uh, have an ex um, exchange rate now in my, in my mind. Um, well, it's like 100 think, or 200 dollars, you know. Yeah, yeah exactly. Here. So I think 300 lari is around about uh, 100 dollar, something like that. And um, yeah, the minimum deposits um, are 30,000 lari or 100,000 lari. So depending which um, option you use of the accounts, uh, you will have a compliance check before the opening, right? So they will look for your application and they will, um, yeah, deny you or um, say, okay, it's okay for you. We can open the account. But um, you anyway um, have to bring all the documents before. And that's the problem. So it means you have to bring the notarized um, copy of your passport, for example. You have to fill out the power of attorney and notarize it with apostille and all these things. So you have to give them all the documents. So you, you have to pay for everything before for overshipping and so on and so on. And then they will look for your um, application. And if they deny you and say, no, we don't want you, um, yeah, you made everything, let's say, um, basically for free and with the TBC banks they will uh, not check you before and they will just straight open the um, account yeah. cool so, so solo bank yeah about minimum deposit about ten thousand dollars and it doesn't mm -hmm. need to be in Georgian laris it can be exactly. in euros or or in dollars it's just an equivalent exactly it can be another currency also yeah so you don't have to expose yourself to the Georgian lari um, you also need a connection to Georgia. So, for example, you need a rental agreement or pay for electricity, something like that, or internet. Uh, so, otherwise, they will not accept you anymore. Um, yeah, they uh, have a longer um, opening process because of all this. And, um, yeah, one thing, what is nice, you have access then to the solo launch. I will show a picture after it for the solo launch. And you can also open a brokerage account. So, if you want to invest in stocks, and, um, and that could be um, and the an option also. And the brokerage account is quite good, actually. It's based on the the reseller of the Saxo Bank platform. So you have access to pretty much all of all European markets, the US, Canada, um, Hong Kong, Australia, et cetera, Japan. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the, the brokerage account, it's nice, but uh, the fees are quite high. So it's good to, let's say, buy and hold for this strategy if you want to um, trade constantly. Um, stocks and something like that, and you're looking for low fees uh, for that, then maybe interactive brokers or other broker uh, broker um, options are better, right? Yes. But um, in Georgia, it could be good to just buy and hold. So if you want to really long-term invest and you pay one time this fee, um, then it's quite a good option. Um, yeah, so is the remote opening still possible? Yes, it is. Uh, so that is that's already told um, you. And um, we can help you with that. And if you want to start now, you will find under the video a link. Um, yeah, in the description below and uh, with that you can fill out the form and after you fill out the form we will give you all the details how much it costs which documents are required 
how long does the process take and so on and so on. So all the details you will get after you fill out the form. All right. Fantastic. Sergio, thank you very much for today. I really appreciate it. So this is an interesting service. I would like to tell people that remote bank account openings in Georgia are great if you can't go to Georgia. Like the easiest way is always go to Georgia, take a flight. You can generally find fairly affordable flights to get to Georgia, especially if you're in Europe. Um, spend some time in, you know, in Tbilisi, in Kutaisi and Batumi, um, op opening a bank account and getting your credit card, your debit cards typically takes three to four days maximum. So you can all do all of that in one short trip, mix it with tourism. And overall, it'll generally cost you the same price as the remote opening service. So um, it's a lot easier this way. But The remote opening service is very useful for people who live far away, who do not have the time to, to go to Georgia, then it's perfect for them. But if you actually have the time, you know, save yourself the trouble, save yourself the paperwork, just go to Georgia. All right. Fantastic. Sergio, thank you very much. Have a lovely day. Ciao.